Hey everyone, this is Justin from Amplified Parts. Today we're going to talk about reverb tanks, specifically the code that's on top of your reverb tank. It's a pretty standard code that was started by Accutronics many, many years ago. It's still in use today. And we're going to give you a rundown on what each one of those significant characters means and why it's so important to match them up on your replacement tanks. Your first significant character will be a number. And it can be, you know, a number like a 1 or 4, an 8 or a 9. 1 and 4 are going to be your short and long 2-spring, respectively. And the 8 and 9 will be your short and long 3-spring, respectively. Whatever your amp requires in terms of space is what you're going to want to choose, which is why it's good to match the tank to the amp. You know, you may not have the space for a long tank in your amp, so you need to use the short. Your second and third significant characters in the alphanumeric code are going to be letters and they're going to be based on your input and output impedance. Your second significant character will be your input impedance. Your third will be your output impedance. This is really important. You want to make sure that you match these up as closely as possible, if not exactly, or you might get a bad reverb sound or no reverb at all. So your next character is going to be decay time. This is a pretty important one. You know, originally when they designed these reverb tanks, they had the different decay times set for different instruments. You know, guitar would be long, organ would be medium, and something like vocals would be short. But nowadays, you know, we're mostly using them in guitar amps. Many manufacturers still use different decay times just based on the design of their amp and the reverb circuit. But it doesn't necessarily have to match. This is one place where you can kind of do what you want to do to some degree. You know, I have a Vox AC30 and originally it had a two spring tank. I threw a three spring in it with a much longer decay and it sounds really cool. It might not sound exactly like Vox intended it, but it sounds fine. And it's more in line with what I would want out of a reverb. The fifth character will be the grounding and insulating scheme for your connectors. Now this is fairly important and you want to match this up pretty well. It's going to be an A, B, C, or D, and they can stand for either input shielded, output grounded, you know, output shielded, input grounded, etc. Any combination in between. And, um, you know, they, the manufacturers, they choose this specifically for the reverb circuit in that amp. So you want to match this one up really well. The sixth character in your alphanumeric code is going to be a lock. So now, not a whole lot of reverb tanks now will even have a locking mechanism, but some older reverb tanks do. I have an old Ampeg and it's got a locking mechanism for travel. It helps protect the springs, but you don't see it very often. And usually this number will just be a one, which means no lock. The seventh and final character in your alphanumeric code is going to be your mounting plane. Now this is pretty important. You'll see a lot of amps, they do, you know, they'll either hang the tank upside down, they'll mount it to the bottom of the cabinet, sometimes it'll be on its side. Uh, that's pretty important because they designed that reverb circuit around that tank and the tank itself was modified for that purpose. So the transducer magnets are mounted in such a way that it will work in the orientation that you have it. So if you change that up, you may not get that great of a reverb sound. So that's about it. We gave you a quick rundown on the seven significant characters in the alphanumeric code on your reverb tank. Sometimes it'll be stamped on the top, sometimes it'll be stamped on the bottom, but it'll be there. Now, if you want more information, you can check out our Tech Corner article on our website. There should be two links below that will have two different Tech Corner articles about reverb tanks. There's a lot to read there. Also. Be sure to check back next week where we'll have a new video and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right. Thanks a lot.